Hey everyone, Rick from Supai here and on today's tutorial what we're going to talk about is how to make a freeze frame Instagram filter. So you see here on my screen what we have is me with a frame around me. If I click we unset this and we kind of go back to normal, a normal camera filter and if I kind of move my hand here and then click away then what I get is this kind of freeze in the background. So what we're going to talk about is how to do this from scratch using the patch editor in Spark AR. <laughs> So I've just opened Spark AR and the first thing I'm going to do is create a brand new project. Now I don't need a plane tracker, target tracker, face tracker, so I'm going to make a blank project from scratch. Here we go. So I'm just going to open this up and what we want to do to start with is, let's make this a little bit bigger so everyone can see. What we want to do is basically have something on this screen that replicates what's happening on the camera texture. So sometimes I want it to be fully working, sometimes I want it to be frozen in time, maybe parts of the screen are frozen. So I wanna basically redraw what is currently on this background. So I'm gonna take the camera and I'm gonna do texture extraction. So this will basically make a camera texture which maps what we have as the current background. Now what I want to do is redraw this. So I'm gonna right click and add a new canvas. Now the canvas is going to go over the screen, a 2D area we can draw inside of. And on this canvas, I'm going to right click and add a rectangle. Now currently the rectangle is in this top corner. I want this to fill the screen. So I'm going to click on width and fill the width and click on height and fill the height. Now currently this has a material. Well, it doesn't because it's a checkboard. So we need to add a material. I'm going to add a new material and double click. Now, at the moment, this is using a shader type standard, which means it has shadows on here. I don't want this to have any shadows. I'm going to make it flat. And by default, this is white, but I can change this texture to be the camera texture. So essentially what we've done at the moment is redraw what is in the background onto this rectangle. So it looks pretty much the same. Now, if I go into rectangle and change the visibility, you can see here we can kind of toggle it on and off. But in the reality of the frame, it doesn't look any different. Now, what we want to do is redraw things on this based on the past. We want to freeze things in time. Now, at the moment, the way that shaders work in Spark AR is they basically do the same pixel at the same time. But what we want to do is re-render the past. Now, how do we go about doing this? Now, if I click on device, what I'll see down here is this thing called a render output. And in here, what I can do is overwrite the current pipeline. Now the pipeline is basically what is happening on screen, this kind of background area that I'm redrawing. What I want to do is hold on to the past, which is kind of true of real life too. What I can do is click create on here, the default pipeline I want to overwrite. So if I create this, what we'll see is the patch editor pop up. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Now what I can see in here is this is what the default usually is. We've got the camera texture, a render pass, a device, which is currently this iPhone and this device screen output. So basically what I've done is drawn this background, not the rectangle, but the background itself. Now what I want to do in here is capture this render pass to reuse it. I want to freeze things in time a little bit. So I'm going to add some space over here. And what I can do is right click and find something called a delay frame. Now delay frame is in blue, which means I can actually hold on to it and send it out elsewhere. This is called a receiver and sender. So I've got this thing which sends something to a receiver. Now what I want to do in here is use this current background and pass it in as the render pass. So I'm going to take this texture and hook this up to the render pass. Now at the moment, of course, it doesn't do anything. And the reason it doesn't do anything is back on our rectangle. Now on our rectangle at the moment, if we go to our material, our material texture is the same as the camera texture. So this stuff at the moment that we've just added doesn't do anything. However, if I move down and I overwrite my texture, if I click here, I get my diffuse texture repair. Now what I want to do in here is use this delay frame to basically say, well, let's start with some kind of blur effect or maybe kind of like a slow-mo type effect going on. So what I want to do is output a mix between this camera texture and this delay. And I kind of want to mix them together. So how do we go about doing this? Well, at the moment, what we did is we took this camera texture and we just basically said, this is the same as the material. We kind of hooked these two things together. However, what we want to do is say, well, I want a mix between this 
and this together. So what I can do is basically right click and have a mix. I want to hook my camera texture up to this first part of the mix. And then I want to right click and have a receiver. Receiver. And on the receiver, I can click this drop down and click delay frame and hook these two up. So basically it's a mix between my current camera texture and this delay frame. Now if I hook these two things up at the moment, what we'll see is the same thing. However, if I change the alpha to something like 1, this will start to do very strange things. Maybe 1.9. There we go. We kind of see this blurring effect kind of go in. So 1.5. So again, if I just turn my uh, thing on. If I move around, there's a little bit of blur on here. If I try this to 1.9, for instance, this is very blurry, as you can kind of see if I move my hand over. And if I turn it to 1, we'll freeze in time. So again, as you can see up here, I am moving around, but this mix between my camera texture and my delay frame is currently set to always be the delay frame. So right down here at the bottom, we see this as one. Again, if I change this to zero, this is this top thing. So this is always full blast camera texture. If I change this to one, this is full blast delay frame. If I mix them between the two, then I get some kind of tween between them. So something like 0.9, I get this kind of blur effect going on. Now, of course, what we want to do is not have this blur effect. We want to freeze things in time. So go between this zero, which is the current live texture, to one, which freezes it in time. So to do that, I want to change this number from zero to one. The way that we're going to do that is using a tap. So I'm going to move down here and I want to update this number. I'm going to right click and do a screen tap. Now what we want to do with the screen tap, and this just has broke, we'll come and fix that in a second. We'll right click and we want to do a switch. We want to switch between on and off. Now if it's on and off, what I want to do is change this number between 0 and 1. So I'm going to use right click and do if then else. So if this is on, I'm going to drag this in here. I want this to be 1. And if it's not on, I want it to be 0. So I've got this toggle between this being on and off. And then I can connect these two up. And what we'll get is currently this being on. However, if I right click and simulate touch, I can click and freeze things in time. There I am moving in the background. If I click again, then I'm back to normal. Now, of course, on the final version of what we want, we don't want it to be the full screen that's being frozen. What we actually want to do is kind of have this area that's frozen around the edge. Now, what we can do is use this on the rectangle. We could basically set on the material itself. We could set an alpha channel. Now, what we could also do is use a SDF to actually do this instead. So between this kind of mix and this material, what I'm going to add in between here is also a, another SDF. So I'm going to add an SDF of a rectangle. There it is. Now the rectangle I'm going to set in the middle but not be the full width. I want it to be like 0.4 in both directions so it's 80% across in, be in both. An SDF needs a step so it has a hard edge on here so I'm going to add this in and basically then I'm going to have a mix. This mix I'm going to push in to here and then take this mix and put it in as the first one. Let's see the first one in here. Is this the right one? There we go. We can see on here, this is just around the edge. So if I click now, I'll see this kind of going around the edge. So what I want to do is actually have the opposite way. So I'm going to take this mix and put it in as a second thing instead. So I'm going to put this mix in here and disconnect there. So I've got the opposite way around. So now on my edge of the frame, if I click, it kind of disappears. And if I click again, I kind of get this frozen around the edge so I can pose in different ways. So what we've got now is this kind of freeze frame effect. We've added it really, really quickly. And it's a really cool effect that we can add in as a freeze frame.